Hello, it's Sarah from Heart Cover Hearts, and I'm here with my much belated um, favorite reads of 2019. I have read so many books in 2019 that I'm breaking this into two. I'm breaking this into a fiction and a nonfiction. I'm also breaking all the rules. I'm not doing a stack ranking uh, because I don't really know how to do that with the types of genres and, and the backlist and the front list and it, it's too much, it's too much. Uh, so I was trying to, I was making myself nuts. And I'm also not gonna restrict myself to only 10. I'm gonna talk about the books that made a, the most profound impact upon me uh, in the year that I read. And I read so many books. This is the best year that I've ever had for reading. I think I made mention in an earlier video that I read upwards of 230 books um, in 2019, which which beats my best year. Um, and I also read more interesting books and more deeply and some more with more intent and more focus. And so it, it was quite, quite frankly, a remarkable year. But with that said, I've gathered a bunch of books here and I have a list and so we'll just go through kind of in random. I'm just going to grab and we'll talk about them. So the first book, again, no particular order, but this one, when I, when I even start to think about this book, my heart constricts a little bit and I get a little tightening in my chest because of all of the deep emotions I felt reading this book. I feel like I know these characters. I know this story and I, and I'm so invested in it. And this is the brilliant Kate Atkinson's A God in Ruins. I would suggest if you are not familiar with her work, uh, start with Life After Life, which is a companion piece to this. Uh, this is the story of a family. It's a continuation of the same family in Life After Life, but we focus on the brother, brother Teddy. And... Uh, and, and I'm not going to say any more because it's, it's so, there's so much here. It's him and his family. So it's a deep character study. It's a study after World War II. Uh, and it kind of goes, it goes uh, forward from there with his family. And it's, Kate Atkinson is a master at the technical and the emotional that she nailed with this book. So that the writing is beautiful, the technique that she used and the structure is fantastic, but the, the story and the characters are just phenomenal. I could, I could gush about this book for so long, but I'm gonna stop right there because we have many more to talk about. Uh, next up, I wanna talk about a book, uh, The Secrets Between Us. Now, this is a book that I read out of order. I didn't realize, uh, like Life After Life and um, and a God in Ruins. It's a companion piece to a previous book. I didn't know anything about it. I saw it at the library and I grabbed it. Uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful story of connecting uh, points of view of, of multiple characters that are all women uh, in India that are working and having kind of relationships in a, in a kind of work setting uh, so that you have a, a housekeeper who was fired, who has to look for new work. Um, so we have her granddaughter that she's taking care of and trying to get into college. We have a woman that she meets when, through uh, trying to, to sell things um, at a local, local market. Uh, and you have a, a woman that she starts working for. And all of these women uh, have different um, different backgrounds, different stories, different socioeconomic uh, is issues at play. And it's so interesting and it's very heartfelt. And there's a lot there. There's a lot to take in. Uh, this is by Thruti Umrigar. Um I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, right? I could be butchering it. But it was really beautiful and I highly recommend it. Uh, next up, The Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoko Ogawa. What a beautiful story. This is, I, what I loved about it was the writing was really sparse, really um, thoughtful and perfectly, and perfectly rendered. A story about a housekeeper, a woman who has to bring her young son uh, every once in a while with her as she starts to be a housekeeper for this older professor who has dementia. 
and there were it's about their relationship it's about his relationship with this little boy and uh, and it's just beautiful and there's depth and there's a lot of interesting aspects to it math is in there I mean I, I never thought I'd ever want to read a book that has math involved in it and yet it was rendered in such a beautiful way and so poetic and in a, a way that feels philosophizes um, where math lives and, and exists in our world. It was just really beautiful and I highly recommend it, of course. Um, next up, I did, I'm not going to talk too much about this here because I did an entire video, I'll put a link to it below, where I raved about this book, Milkman by Anna Burns. I read this because my In Real Life book club has been reading the Man Booker, now just the Booker Award shortlist. And other th because of that, I read this book. I would not probably not have picked it up because it made me nervous. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a little too challenging or too difficult, or I don't know what I thought. But uh, I'm so glad I did because this was mwah, perfect. It was, a, a, if I could think about a Sarah book, this is a Sarah book. Emotion, interesting structure, um, uh, uh, fantastic characters, really strong female protagonists, uh, political um, political implications, layers. All of it was all included in here. Uh, tell me more. You have more of these in in your in your back pocket. Let me know because I I want to read these. Uh, another book that I talked about in with this book in this review that has stayed with me. Women Talking by Miriam Taves. Uh, this is not, this is sparse. It's not a typical book, but it is that it has emotion. It has shock and it has horror and it has pain. Uh, it also has hope and it also has humor. Uh, it's the story of a group of women uh, based on a true story uh, in a Mennonite community that have come to the conclusion and realization that they have been abused by their men in their community, the leaders in their community for years. And the men are now facing consequences and they have a very unique moment of time, a specific space and time to make a decision of what they're going to do. Are they going to stay or are they going to leave? And they are, they have been isolated. They speak a language that is only spoken there and they have never been out in the world because they've been living in this Mennonite community that's very patriarchal. This has, it was so thoughtful, so many considerations. I, I'm still thinking about this and therefore it's on my list. Okay, another book that I just, I absolutely adored this year was Old Baggage by Lisa Evans. Now I heard about this because this was on one of the lists for the Women's Prize. And when I heard it, I thought, oh, I want to read that. Uh, it's a story of an, uh, an old woman who was a suffragette in, in England. And they've won. The suffragettes won. And now what does she do? And, and I'm making it a little more flippant than it is. Uh, there's a lot here. Uh, but this woman has a zeal and a, and a zest for making things happen. And she needs something to put that energy into. I loved it. I thought it had the perfect amount of whimsy and heart and seriousness and emotion. Uh, and I hear that there might be actually be a sequel coming up to this, which delighted me to, to no end. But if you've watched my channel, you know I love an old lady protagonist. This was right up my alley. Speaking of old lady protagonists, I'm going to go straight into the other old lady protagonist that 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 really blew my mind. This is Olga Tatarchuk's Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead. Now, if that's not a title that, that piques your interest, I don't know what I could do for you because that one definitely piqued my interest. This is a murder mystery, literary murder mystery with an old woman at the center of it. Uh, she lives in this remote village that's on the border of Poland and I think Czechoslovakia and people start showing up dead and she starts trying to think about it and solve this crime. Fantastic. I, I really love this. I thought it was so fun and so different than what I was expecting. Um, Olga Tatarczyk uh, just won the Nobel Prize in Literature um, and I think she deserves it. This was phenomenal. 
Okay, the next one that I'd like to talk about is a book that Russell from Ink and Paper Blog recommended on his channel. And the way he described it just piqued my interest. I, I When I saw it at, the, at my library uh, digital uh, collection, I grabbed it. And this was In West Mills by Deshaun Charles Winslow. Russell said something that was so true and I kept thinking back to it as I was as I was reading it and it feels very Nora Zora Neale Hurston and I love I love that uh, this is a story of a cranky woman she's irascible she is difficult uh, she is going to live by her means and her standards period and it's about her relationship with the men in her life and her relationship in this community. Uh, I thought it was beautifully written. It gave me a lot to think about and it made me feel a lot. And I, and I just loved her writing. I loved the setting and, uh, and the characters. And I thought it was fantastic. Okay. Next up, this was one of the best buddy reads and one of the very first buddy reads I've ever done. So thank you booktube and thank you, Teresa for joining me in the most magnificent book, The Quincunx by Charles Palliser. This is a deep backlist. I think this was released in the 1980s, late 80s. This would be fantastic if you want something for Victober that's set in Victorian times, but maybe is a little modern. Uh, this kind of maybe Vict Victober adjacent, so we, shall we say? Uh, if you like Dickens, if you like puzzles, if you like uh, stories that that are the structure is very interesting uh, and the plot is really is really propulsive this is your book uh, this is a story of a young boy and we follow him as he grows up who is at the center of a mystery uh, we don't know who he who his parent who his father is he doesn't either and guess what a lot of people do know and they're after him and so it's a mystery and it's set in Victorian times and in, in very Dickensian style, there's a ton of characters and there's a ton of intricate plot points and, and it's absolutely brilliant. I thought it was fantastic and reading it with Teresa was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, she's an amazing buddy reader. So thank you very much for, for that experience and reading this along with me. Okay, uh, another buddy reading experience I had, uh, this was for Victober was uh, this gorgeous, gorgeous, I'm not sure if you can see it. Uh, this is North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. I read this with Jacqueline from Six Minutes for Me, and we both fell in love with Elizabeth Gaskell. This is my first Elizabeth Gaskell that I ever read, and I'm so angry, so angry that I didn't know about her. How could I know about Jane Austen, who is rem remarkable? She's fantastic. How did I know about the Brontes, but not about Elizabeth Gaskell? This also definitely a Sarah book. It had um, class str struggles. It had uh, a little bit of romance, um, I, uh, but uh, but a really strong female character and no, no simpering uh, uh, silly ladies here. A uh, really strong female character. Great, a great story. I absolutely adored it. And I'm currently uh, following it up with Wives and Daughters, which I hear is even better than this. So I can't wait uh, to get into it. Then next up, uh, let's talk about another buddy read. So I'm on a little buddy read uh, mix here. And this is The Leopard. This is by Giuseppe di Lampedusa. I read this with um, with uh, Amelia. She's uh, somebody who, uh, just like Teresa, they don't have channels, which is our loss because they're brilliant, brilliant readers and brilliant women. Uh, but we we read this. I put out a call because I wanted to, to read these books that I'd had on my bookshelf for a long time and was intimidated by, to be quite frank. So I, they jo both joined me in these in these different books. But reading this modern classic, Italian modern classic in translation with Amelia was everything. She's so smart. And, and she gave me insight um, that I just wouldn't have had access to because she lives in Germany and, and has kind of more of a historical understanding of this place and time, which is Sicily at a really important time in Italy's growth, uh, when Italy actually became a, a country. <clears throat> 
uh, very much like Downton Abbey, where it's uh, about the aristocracy at the change of changing of the guard, so to speak. The same is true of the leopard. And it's about the family, this one ar aristocratic family as they go through that transition. But it's very modern and it's very interesting. And so you, it, I, it's very hard to explain. Just trust me when I say this is a fantastic read. Okay. Uh, the next book that I want to talk about is a, a story that just completely took me by surprise. Uh, this is a this is a uh, Virago modern classic edition. I'll show you there of uh, the Return of the Soldier by Rebecca West. I wanted to read um, read of this Virago modern classic. I had bought this when I was um, traveling and. And I just thought, oh, I really wanted to kind of read deeper backlist of women writers, of which this publisher does. I heard, I've heard about this, and so I grabbed it one day. I don't even remember what the impulse was, but I was completely hooked. Um, really beautiful, beautiful, evocative language, a little flowery, uh, but the story of a, of a soldier who comes back home and he is... He's, there's something wrong with him. He doesn't, his memory, he has big chunks of his, of his life that he doesn't remember. So he comes back to a home with a wife that he doesn't really know, doesn't remember. And, um, but meanwhile, he's still in love in his mind with his first love that he was not allowed to marry. And it's the story of the women, uh, in this, in this, in his life, including his cousin beautiful the and and how they treat him and the kindness and the and the gentleness and and the love they show him and the, meanwhile also the pain that they feel uh for the confusion that he's exhibiting and where what it makes them feel is palpable and powerful so it's beautiful okay another book that i'm so happy i read that was such a shock i think i've said multiple times how i Short stories make me nervous. I don't always like them, but I had I have three of them that appear on this list, and this is a short story collection, which is even even more shocking. This is "Look at How Happy I'm Making You," and this is by Polly Rosenwig. This book was a complete surprise to me. This book was fantastic. Look at motherhood in all its different aspects. So it's a very feminist uh, story. There's one where a woman has had children and is, you know, maybe maybe not in love with, with the experience. Uh, there's just a range, a, a really rich range of all the different ways that women experience motherhood. And I haven't read anything like this uh, ever. And I, and I found it uh, well-crafted, well-done. Some of the stories just really hit home for me, uh, being a woman who's purposely childless. And I... I, I just loved it. I thought it was great, and I and I hope more people um, tune into it to read it. Okay, another book on my list that I thought was was completely surprised by was The Binding by Bridget Collins. This is kind of like a um, fantasy. There's there's aspects of it's like a historical fantasy. Uh, it's, it feels like historical fiction. You're reading about this old, other time in, you think, I think it might be England, where a young man is sent to apprentice for a, to become a bookbinder. But bookbinding is not what you think. It's not the act of creating books. It's actually uh, taking people's, people's memories that they don't want, their traumas, and putting it in a book uh, and thereby freeing them of those bad, bad emotions. It was, it was such an interesting book. It, I didn't expect it. Uh, and there's a love story that is so beautiful at the heart of this. I thought it was a really great read and I'm still thinking about it. It was one of those fun surprises. Another fun surprise. Uh, this I owe completely to the lovely women that were doing, um, doing Aussie April. And this is Jane Harper's The Lost Man. Uh, I, I binged all of Jane Harper, so I'm completely caught up. I really want her to, to get on the next one because I need, I need more. Uh, but The Lost Man was a standalone, not a series, uh, of a man who uh, had died in the outback, but he has his, 
he's, he's, his car was filled with all of the things he should have needed to, to survive. So from there, the mystery starts of what happened to this man. What I love about this book is that it, her sense of place is phenomenal. I absolutely felt like I was right there in the outback. I felt uh, really transported to this place and her pace and her, her storytelling is, is exceptional. So I'm, I'm a, a convert. Next up, switching gears tr in a tremendous way. This little slim, tiny little book packs such a punch. This is Pleasure by Mary Gateskill. I saw this on um, Shawnee of, of um, Pastori Times. I think she, it was on her Instagram. She, she said she was reading this. She wanted to talk to someone about it. And and from what she, just a little bit she had mentioned, I thought, I, I, let me see if I can, I can find it. And sure enough, I found it at my library, grabbed it. I binged this. I literally didn't leave a restaurant to finish this because I couldn't, it was com propulsive, compulsive. I could not stop. This is a story of me too, uh, but not in the way that you would expect, not in the way that you would think. And it provides so many things to think about. I'm not going to say any more because I don't want to ruin this, but this was, this was a fantastic read. Okay, next up, uh, another Victober gem. Far from the Madding Crowd, and this is, I had to go find this uh, after, this is a, a Folio Society edition of the book. Um, Doris at, at uh, Aldi Books had raved about this book and how much she loved it and how, how Gabriel Oaks was just such a wonderful, wonderful uh, hero. And so when it came to Victober, I said, I know which one I want to read. I'm so glad I did. This book was beautiful. I loved it. It was such a surprise. I didn't know what to expect other than uh, that I was going to be in for a good treat. And boy, boy, was I. I think um, the story was fantastic. Bathsheba is such an interesting character. And Gabriel. Oh, Gabriel. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, coming near, getting close to the end. I'm sure you're, you're thinking this is never going to end, but it will. Uh, next up, I was reading these Faber series of tiny little, little, um, stories, individual pack stories. This is part of Faber and Faber's 90th anniversary. They're packaging these up and they did a one set, um, last year and then, uh, and then they released a new, a new set, uh, near the end of the year. This is Daughters of Passion by Julia O'Fallon. Such a, such a great great, great, great little, little cover here. This was, uh, uh, when I talked about the milkman, uh, I think about these in very similar ways. Uh, this is a story of a woman who's on a hunger strike and it's because she has been arrested for suspicion of IRA activity. And we go back in her life, but she's an unreliable narrator, not only because of, of kind of what's happened in her, her story, but also because she's she's in the throes of dementia because of being on a hunger strike. There's so much here. It's such a p impactful story and it stayed with me. Uh, so this was a, a great read. Also from that series, another one that shocked me to no end, Lori Moore's Terrific Mother. Uh, in this story, something so stunning happens in the first, I think, two pages that I actually dropped this when I, when I was reading it. And I thought, oh my God, what is it? What's going to happen from here? And it's basically about a woman who is trying to get on with her life after something horrible, horrible uh, happens that she is guilty of doing at the very beginning. Wonderful, wonderful book or short story, I should say. Okay, uh, getting near the end. Uh, I read this at the very end of the year and I needed to make sure that, that my emotions of this still resonated. Uh, this is Jacqueline Woodson's Red at the Bone. Uh, I talk about Jacqueline Woodson's writing. Her writing is so smooth and luxurious and evocative and beautiful. Uh, but there's also really great characters. This is a story of a of a of multiple characters um, from their points of view. But the central narration of the the central story really is of uh, 
what happens when the middle generation does something that impacts both both generations and a family and uh, how they all how they've all dealt with that with the repercussions of that i loved it uh okay i will say this book was everyone says this book is really great but you know you never know until you read it yourself Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson. This is a Persephone book uh, that I got in my, my latest travels when I finally made it to my pilgrimage to Persephone was finally successful. And this was just such a delightful, fun, fun, beautiful book about a, a woman who's on her last tethers. Um, she needs a job. She's really, really out of sorts. If she does not get this, get this role, she's going to be in trouble because she's, she owes money. She couldn't be homeless. She's really struggling. And she is sent out to, to, um, interview for a position. And there's a little mistaken identity. And all of a sudden she gets pulled into this wacky, wacky hijinks of this day, uh, of class and, and beauty and, and, and uh, silliness, all the stuff that happens. This is such a fun book. I highly recommend it, especially if you need something light, but you want to read something of substance too, this would be great. And then uh, uh, the surprise of the year for me, uh, this was something that uh, was recommended to me in um, my Burt's list. I'll put a link to that list of books and uh, the story behind that uh, below. But this was by far one of the most impactful, beautiful books I read this year. I Loved You More by Tom Spanbauer. I did this as a buddy read with uh, Leo from A Little Book Life. And the wallet that this book packed for me was was intense. This is a visceral, physical book. Uh, you, you feel as you read. You feel... Um, uh, senses. This is a sensory book. Maybe there's a better way to say, um, not just emotions, but everything, uh, powerful in your face, um, uh, story of, uh, a love triangle, um, and told from the point of view of a gay man who's in love with, with a man who then gets involved with his ex, with his ex-girlfriend. Beautiful story, powerful punch, uh, raw, visceral, beautiful writing and that end sentence we talk a lot about the first sentence we don't talk enough about the last sentence this last sentence stay 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 for the stay for the end so that's it my full list <laughs> i would love to know have you read any of these what are your thoughts um will you pick any of these up um, comment below uh, and I would love to, to start a conversation with you. Thank you for watching and putting through putting up with this entire list of books. Uh, look forward to more books uh, and more reading in the future. Thank you. Bye.